God's Eternal Purpose by Gary Siegler Chapter 8 You know a lot of people are saying today that the church age is over. The early church was deceived 2,000 years ago. What we've been calling the church age for 2,000 years is simply Babylon, an area of confusion and misunderstandings and critical judgments and rules and regulations. The church is not man-made doctrines and traditions. The church is simply Christ revealed and manifested in a people. So how could we ever say the church is over? If you say the church is over, and I understand what you mean when you say that, but for the church to be over, Christ would have to be over, because the church is nothing less than Christ in you and Christ in me. The church age is not over, but the system of Babylon is beginning to fall. I love what Paul said about the Colossians when he said, The great mystery to the Gentiles not to the believers, but the mystery to the Gentiles is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he meant what he said. Christ in you is the hope of the unbeliever because the unbelievers have been told for so many years that they were alienated and separated from God when the truth of that is the only place they've ever been separated from God is in their darkened mind and understanding. And that is why Paul said in Ephesians 4:17, "This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God which is in them due to the blindness or hardness of their hearts." He is talking to believers here, and he just spent three chapters telling them all the wonderful benefits they had received from God, how that they were chosen in God, they were predestinated in God, they were called even before the foundation of the world. And he said, now that you understand this, don't be like the Gentiles walking in the vanity of their fallen carnal mind, having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God due to ignorance. Thank the Lord we are beginning to wake up and realize the truth of Christ in us. Linda Musgrove wrote and sings a song called, When I Speak. Not when the preacher speaks, not when the Pope speaks, but when I speak, here are the words. When I speak, all heaven stands to listen. When I speak, his voice is heard in me. When I speak, the mountains, they start moving. For when I speak, they are cast into the sea. When I speak, the darkness starts to tremble. When I speak, his light begins to shine. When I speak, the atmosphere, it changes. So when I speak, the room is filled with light. It's not by might or by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. I've given you all power, so speak according to my word. And you can have just what you say, if only you believe. So just speak the word and walk the word, and it will work for thee. Yes, I can have just what I say, if only I believe. So I will speak the word and walk the word and it's going to work for me. When we stand under the anointing and in the power of the Spirit when we speak, all of heaven stands to listen. There is such a voice ringing throughout the earth today that even those in the other realms are gathering and rejoicing to hear such a word that is coming to deliver God's people from a darkened mind and understanding, causing us to realize that we truly are his sons and daughters. It is not a theory anymore. It is not a doctrine anymore. It's the reality of our life. Why do we let differences in our understanding and differences in our doctrines divide us? 
because we don't understand the heart of God. Paul said in Romans 8 verse 6, to be carnally minded is death. What does it mean to be carnally minded? It just simply means to think out of the reasoning mind, or what we call the human consciousness. To think out of that mind is nothing but death. No matter how much you love God, no matter how many times you go to church, no matter how many chapters you read, no matter how much you pray in tongues, if you are still thinking from a carnal human perspective, you are walking in death. Paul so clearly told the Romans in verse 1 and 2 of chapter 12, Present your bodies a living sacrifice and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then he said, let this mind be in you. He didn't say you had to pray for it or reach for it. He said, just let it be. Let it be. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I've had many prominent ministers come against us because we simply say what the scriptures say. Don't think it is robbery to be equal with God. I understand there are a lot of carnal Christians today running around saying, I am God. That is not what I am talking about because whenever in your human carnal understanding you stand up and declare, I am God, that is the abomination of desolation. That is the carnal man sitting in this temple declaring himself to be God. That is not what I am talking about. I'm talking about the veils of the flesh begin to be pulled back from our darkened mind and understanding, and we begin to function out of the mind of Christ. Then we can say, I am the manifestation of God on this earth. I am the light of this world. And when I speak, the darkness begins to flee and the room fills with light. Oh my God, what a life. Religion has never ever produced a solution for the religious mind. We are always trying to somehow make ourselves better and more acceptable to God, and it's just a waste of time. You will never be any more righteous. You will never be any more holy. You will never be any closer to God than you are right now. The only reason we don't experience that is because of the darkened mind and understanding. We've had 2,000 years of religious teaching, and we are still in Ephesians 4, verse 17, with a darkened mind and understanding being alienated from the very life and source of God that is in us because of the darkened mind and understanding. Thank God the Son, S-U-N, Son, S-O-N, is beginning to rise. Life in the Spirit is simply a personal leading of God in your spirit. It is so simple and it is so easy to walk in the reality of the kingdom. Just begin to listen for the voice of God. Oh, it's the most marvelous life that we have. For years I tried everything I could possibly do to make myself holy. I never read less than 10 chapters a day because I was told when I went into Pentecost, Gary, you need to do a couple things. You need to read 10 chapters a day and pray in tongues for an hour a day and your problems will be over. I did that for 13 years and my problems didn't end. We are always trying to save ourselves by what we do rather than by believing what Jesus did. Romans 5.10 says this, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. There is only one thing that will ever save anybody, and that is, we shall be saved by his life. Since we are saved by his life, what can we do to make that happen? We simply need to believe it. 
If we could just believe some of the simple things that Jesus taught, you can learn so much today off the internet, but you cannot learn to be a manifestation of God on this earth. We must have a revelation that we are already a manifestation. I'll never forget years ago I heard from the Spirit, you've been trying so hard to be something that you've always been. Stop trying and just be. As you stop trying and you just be, you will experience what your heart is longing for. Salvation really is just falling in love with Jesus. You say, how can I do that? How can I really love him? Well, Paul says this, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. You see, Adam wasn't created a living soul. Adam was created in Genesis chapter 1 in the very image and likeness of God. He was God's manifestation. But that first man became a living soul. How did that happen? He fell in his understanding and he began to live a life that was separated and alienated from God by learning to choose the good over the evil. God said, the very day that you eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. So the first man that was created in the image and likeness of God was literally God in manifest form. He then became a living soul. But it says, the last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. So how could we fall in love with Jesus? The same spirit that motivated him the same spirit that raised him from among the dead is now dwelling and living and pulsating within a people. The most beautiful essence of his substance is within you, and you can fall so in love with that presence. When you speak, all heaven stands to listen, because you finally come into that understanding of who you are. The only thing that saves us from a life of what we call sin and separation is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I used to say we are spiritual beings having a human experience, but I've come to realize that that is not quite the truth anymore because our human experience is really a spiritual experience. We are just coming into an understanding that to be human is what God desires all along and that the spiritual must become natural and the natural must become spiritual so that we are so mingled and so mixed with God in consciousness that we no longer can separate the two. Jesus said in John 3, that which is born flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. 1 Corinthians 15.45 And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He wasn't created a living soul. He was made a living soul by the choices that he made. People talk a lot today about the dividing and the separating of soul and spirit. You really can't divide the soul and the spirit except in illustration to say if you are living in the soul, it simply means that you are living according to your carnal mind and understanding. But the soul and the spirit are really one. It's just the fact that if you are a soulish being, you are living by a carnal understanding. However, when you begin to turn and focus on the spiritual being that you are, then you become a spiritual being, living by the life of the Spirit of God within you. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. One day I read that, and that just hit me. The last Adam. You think about that phrase. The last Adam. Now if that really means what it says... We've been lied to by religion for 2,000 years because on the cross, that was the last Adam. Adam represents that fallen soulish creature that is separated and alienated from God. And that is why religion has taught us that we're born in sin and conceived in iniquity. 
If that scripture means what it says, that Jesus was the last Adam, that means that you were not born in sin and alienated from God. You just believed that because that is what you've been taught and that is your experience. What you are is the incorruptible, indestructible seed of God that has been placed in the earth of this human existence. You have never been a sinner. You have never been separated and alienated from God except in your darkened understanding. There are no more atoms. Everyone that is born in this world, as I stated earlier, the child is born, but the son is given. Never forget that. You see, your mother had a child that is born a fleshly human being, but you weren't born, you were given. The spirit was given. In John twenty twenty two. Jesus on his resurrection day, he just appeared amongst his disciples and he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. When he breathed on them, their spirit was quickened, and they began to walk as a new creation man. Whatever Adam did that caused him to come into a human understanding, separated and alienated from God, so that no longer could he walk in total union and oneness with God, was reversed in John twenty twenty two, when Jesus breathed on them and simply said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That is what all of us experience when we experience what some call the new birth, being born again, being saved, or being regenerated. How many Christians would say, I've been born again, if asked? They say, yes, I have been born again. How can we say we are born again, but be so divisive, full of anger and bitterness, to be born again means just that. There is a new life that comes forth within you and overcomes all the negative things in our lives as we submit the leading of the Spirit. It is not self-effort, but it is becoming conscious of a new life within. I think Peter, at least in this instance, had a better understanding. He said, Ye are being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the living and abiding word of God. We are being born again. And Jesus said, to be born again, you are like the wind. Nobody knows where it comes from. Nobody knows where it goes. We are beginning to experience some of those things now, just like finding ourselves in places when we don't know how we got there. I've had people call me and tell me that I came to them and ministered to them and I don't even have any recollection of it. What we have all experienced up to this point is not being born again. We have experienced regeneration. Why does the scriptures use that term regeneration? You cannot have regeneration unless at one time you were generated. Some people say, I don't believe in pre-existence. I don't believe I was with God from the foundation of the world. And I say, well then, who were the sons of God that shouted for joy when they saw the creation? If we were not with God from the creation of the world, why would you need to be regenerated? We haven't understood some of the simplest things. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17 says, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I was taught for years that I had a human spirit, but it was not divine. That was before I understood I don't only have a spirit, I am a spirit. I am a spirit, not I have a spirit. He that is joined unto the Lord, he that has the regeneration experience, is one spirit. There are not two spirits. There never will be two spirits. There is only one spirit. When you become conscious of that and you focus on the true nature of your being, that is when you can say, when I speak, all heaven stands to listen because the magnificence of his glory is being revealed in a people. How did we miss it? All we can say is that it just wasn't the time, but this is the time. 
there have always been people down through the ages that have had this understanding. We are born again by the living and abiding Word of God. As God speaks to you, the Word quickens you, energizes you, and causes new desires within you. As God speaks, you sense the unfathomable love of all creation. As God speaks, you hear things like, quote, I love you with an everlasting, unconditional love. I only see you as perfect because that is the way I brought you forth. I will remind you that as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions. Awake from the dust of human thinking. Arise and put on your beautiful garments of righteousness, peace, and joy. Stop trying to be perfect as you can be nothing else. Your perception of yourself as less than I have made you, is to be, is but a lie. You are my hidden treasure, soon to be manifested to the world. So arise, and let your light shine, so those you meet will in reality be meeting me. They are waiting for you, so do not hide your light, but let it shine with the magnificence of my presence." Unquote. 